My name is Dr. Kevin Peterson. I'm a scientist and perfumer that also happens to own a bar. I use sensory analysis and basic scientific tools to study cocktails and make them more delicious. I previously found that temperature is critical to the daiquiri staying ice. The easiest way to keep the drink cold would be to drop an ice cube into it. The issue is that as that ice cube melts, it adds dilution to the drink, and eventually that dilution becomes too much and fills the cocktail. So what I want to do today is test the range of dilution, figure out where the ideal dilution is, does the amount of dilution that I get by just normally shaking the drink lead to the ideal level of dilution, or is there a lower or higher amount where the drink would be preferred. To figure out my baseline dilution level, I'm going to build daiquiri as I normally would, but rather than shake it, I'm going to stir it so I don't introduce any air bubbles which would drop my measurements. And then I'm going to measure the volume before and after. I wind up with about 35% dilution due to the melted ice. Next, I'm going to test a wine range of dilution, making sure that I go both high enough and low enough that I am too high and too low to the point where the daiquiri is no longer enjoyable. I'm going to add the water in a controlled amount so I'm getting exactly the amount of dilution that I expect and that allows me to sweep that dilution variable in a controlled way. I'm then going to put each pre-diluted daiquiri into the freezer, let it come down to the appropriate temperature, take it out and with a frozen tin shake it again to aerate it so I'm not adding any dilution, just air bubbles and that will be the point at which I do the taste test. There is a range of dilution at which the drink is delightful. At about 25 Fahrenheit, there's a slightly wider band. As the temperature goes up, the band gets slightly smaller and smaller. I was surprised at how quickly the drink became unenjoyable once it crossed that dilution threshold. The daiquiri became unenjoyable when it didn't have enough dilution. So you can't just mix this, throw it in the fridge or freezer without any dilution that is also not ideal, it needs at least a little bit of water to taste as it should. So I mapped out all these individual points where the drink is good, it's mediocre, it's bad, but I want to turn that into kind of a topographical map and show regions of ideal daiquiri, less ideal, and highly non-ideal daiquiri, and then look at how the daiquiri moves through that space as it warms up, or if I put an ice cube in there as the ice melts. Now I needed to know the rate of dilution, so I shook a daiquiri normally, added an ice cube, and then every few minutes pulled the ice cube out, measured how much mass was left in the ice cube, and assumed that the rest had melted and was in the drink. At normal room temperature for this kind of glass, the dilution increases at about 1% per minute. That's gonna allow me to show the path of how the daiquiri moves in time while seeing in that ideal range. It also gives me some ability to compare how a drink with ice or without ice would travel from the ideal range to the non-ideal range. The normal shaking adds a lot of dilution to the drink and puts us very close to the upper threshold of desirable dilution level. So the really ideal point for the daiquiri to start is at about 15% dilution, which is the lower limit or very close to the lower limit of ideal dilution, and right around 25 Fahrenheit. Now, if some of the ingredients are colder, I'm not going to melt as much ice. So luckily, my first guess was to throw the rum in the freezer, and that actually brought me to the ideal level of dilution. The rum won't freeze, the rum won't turn into a solid. You know, the lime juice or the simple syrup may get real sticky or may freeze completely, but the rum is gonna stay liquid and stay pourable. So making the daiquiri with rum from the freezer puts me at 15% dilution, but I'm still at slightly too high of a temperature. If I put my drinking glass in the freezer as well, then I wind up right around that 25 Fahrenheit ideal point, bring me to my desired level of dilution and temperature. Using a glass from the freezer versus a room temperature glass has a four to five degree swing. So when I pour my freshly shaken fully chilled daiquiri into a room temperature glass, it almost immediately jumps up four to five degrees, which puts me that much closer to the non-ideal range. If I use a chilled glass, I might even be able to pull the temperature down a little bit, or at least keep it at the same level it's at when I shook it. Now I've got a wide range at which I can add dilution through melting ice and still be within the ideal range. 
I've still got a decent range in the temperature axis before I cross over that point where the drink gets too warm and is no longer delicious. This gives me a vastly more amount of time to enjoy my daiquiri before it dies of either temperature or dilution, but there's a way I can stretch life even a little bit further if I add an ice cube of the right size. I know that the normal Hoshizaki top hat ice cubes that I use weigh just over a half ounce, so they're almost exactly the right size to add to my daiquiri so that the ice can melt, keeping the temperature the same while the dilution increases. Once the ice cube is fully melted, the temperature will start to rise and give me the longest possible life of the daiquiri in the ideal temperature and dilution zone. Now I have 30 minutes of delicious daiquiri to enjoy instead of the original five minute lifetime that the daiquiri had. So the three biggest things to extend the lifetime of the daiquiri, one, put the rum in the freezer, chill the rum so that when you shake the drink, you land at the ideal dilution level. Number two, put the glass in the freezer. So that's gonna help keep the drink cold and put you at the ideal temperature point, give you the maximum amount of range before the temperature crosses over into the non-ideal range and add a piece of ice of the right size so the ice can melt. Once it's fully melted, the drink can start to warm up and give you the longest lifetime in the ideal temperature and dilution range. This analysis has given me the insight needed to extend the lifetime of a daiquiri from five minutes all the way up to 30 minutes. Check out my next video where I will combine these tips and tricks as well as pit them against each other to find the most long lasting daiquiri.